In this video, we're going to go over how to get landmarks up and running in Quest Map Pro. So we've gone through the process of integrating it. And if we hit play, I'm not sure why it's on simulate. Uh, if we hit play, we can see we've got our mini map. We can change the zoom on the mini map. We can open up the map. We can zoom in on the map and move around, all that sort of stuff. We can hit, I think it was P to center on the player. And all that stuff is all set up and running. But we don't have anything for the world, for the maps to show. So what we can do is we can use this yellow house as an example. We can navigate into quest map, blueprints, actors, world objects, and then find this one here. BP underscore quest map pro underscore landmark. If we just drag this one in, in, in here and position it more or less where we want, that's actually pretty good. I'll move it back one. And I think I'll just make it maybe 480 by 480. So it's not overhanging over the edge there. So this defines the area for this landmark. So we're going to give this an icon of home. This is just using the demo content that comes with Quest Map Pro. And we'll give this a yellow just to match the color of the house. We can call this something like a yellow farmer's house. And if we want it to be able to be fast traveled to and from, we just set these up as enabled. Now, if we hit play, you will see that the house is already appearing on the compass because we're quite close to it, and it's actually on the map as well. If we start all over here, that wouldn't happen, and we'll demonstrate that in a minute. Now, if we head towards it, at some point, we will actually discover it. There we go. It's been discovered. However, it's white. So if we want it to actually appear yellow, we need to open up our controller and go to the Quest Map Pro Manager, scroll until we find the landmarks under markers, and just set use landmark color from actor. If that's set to false, all landmarks will be the same colors, and they will use the discovered color when discovered. Currently, it will still use these two colors for unknown and undiscovered, but once it goes to discovered, it will use the icon from the actor. So if we hit play on that, you can see it's a gray color now, and as we get closer on the compass, it'll turn a, orange, a yellow. And if we look at the map, same thing there. Now, right now, the fast travel is set up just to use the location of the actor, and that's not ideal, as you saw, we spawned facing the wall. So one of the things we can do is we can go back into our world actors folder, world objects folder, and use a travel point. We can put that down wherever we want the player to spawn, and we can actually use that to control what way they're facing as well. Now, it is a little bit harder with the third-person character because they're not a first-person camera. But we've discovered that now. So if we fast travel here, we didn't set that up right, my bad. We need to click on that and actually tell it to use the travel point. So ideally, you would probably name this something like travel point yellow house. And we probably want to name the landmark also Yellow House. We hit save, wander over here to discover the landmark, and we'll just run away so it shows the fast travel a little bit better. Get up on here. We hit fast travel, and there we go. So it controls which way the camera is facing. So th that's about it for the landmarks. There is some other things such as navigation points, but I'll cover that once we start looking at the navigation trails. There's some other things you can do here, like move the billboard height up. That only impacts in the editor. Uh, you can use a spherical collider instead of a box one if you want. That's really about it, though. So I'm going to go through and set up some other ones just so we've got a better demonstration here of an actual world. So let's start with this red house we're going to do this exact same process here we're just going to drag in a landmark put it in the right spot maybe resize it to like 400 yeah it looks about right and we're going to call this one red farmers house we'll give this also a home icon and we'll set this one to a red and we'll just give it a travel point as well. Uh, let's make this one look at the house when you spawn in. There we go. We'll call this one travel point red house. And the other landmark we'll call red house. Set the travel point here to the red house one. 
And we're just going to enable fast travel. And then what else have we got? We've got a blue house over here. We can probably just leave that one about that size. Cool, there's blue farmer's house. Home, set it to blue. And we'll add in a travel point for this one as well. Call this travel point blue house. Call the landmark blue house. And we'll set the travel point. Enable fast travel. Now we've got some other locations here. So we've got like this little foresty area. I say foresty area. Lovely programmer art. So let's set under the floor. That's on the floor there. So this one's a bit bigger. Let's set this to the full size of this zone. So I think that's probably... No, that's the other way. We could measure this, but I think that's about right. Yep, there we go. And, I mean, you could also scale this as well. But I like using actual values. There we go. And let's give this an icon of trees, or a tree, and we'll just call this forest zone. Set this to a green. And let's make it so we can't fast travel to these ones, this one. And so you can see that these don't need to be unique, let's just copy paste this. Let's make this a little bit smaller, 400, yep, and probably about 1,200 is probably the right size there, yep. So we'll just call that forest zone as well. And then the last area we really have is this little area, it's meant to be like a bandit area. So let's give this one, let's use a spherical collider for this one and just scale it up a bit to encompass that whole area and I don't really know what icons I've got for this uh, let's just call it let's just use this one let's call it bandit neighborhood and we'll use a purple for that because it's the color of the houses and we don't want to allow fast travel from this one Actually, that's something we should do. We could probably allow fast travel from these. But not to them. Did that sit on both? It did, yep. And this one, we will not allow fast travel from or to. So if we fire up our game, you'll see we have a bunch of icons on the top. We actually, I think, close enough to see. Oh, we're not far. We're not close enough to see this one. These ones are all within our radius, so we can actually change that. If we go into blueprints and open up our controller, go to manager. We can set the landmark activation radius to something more like two thousand. And now you'll see that we only actually have two it two of them showing up now. So let's just have a run around and activate all these. So that one's been activated. I think I might actually leave it there. I think that, that illustrates the point well enough. We can't fast travel to this one, but we can fast travel to this one. Likewise to this one. Oh, we haven't, a haven't actually discovered this one yet, so we can't. So that's how you get landmarks up and running. Like I said, there is a little bit more to it, and we do have some additional settings in here you can play around with. Uh, so, like, you can change the size of the landmarks on the map and the mini-map and all that sort of thing. But for the most part, that should get you started, and we will cover the navigation trails in the navigation trail video. Thank you for watching, and if you have any feedbacks or questions, feel free to leave them in all the normal places.